Solving Equations with Rational Expressions, Part 2. So we'll concentrate in this section on problems that could be done as proportions. A couple of them I may solve for you both ways to show you um, just the difference. Right? So uh, we do have an equation. You make sure of that first. You need an equals. Right? We have variables in the denominator, so we have to find our exclusions. Uh, for our first denominator, we can throw away 1. 1 minus 1 would be 0. So x cannot be 1. For the second one, it's a quadratic. So we'll have to write it out. x squared minus 1 equals 0. Move your 1 over. So x squared equals 1. And you will have to take your square root of both sides. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So x equals plus or minus 1. Remember, we're finding exclusion. So positive 1 and negative 1 have to be thrown away. We've already thrown away positive 1. So we don't have to write it again, but we have to write the negative 1 that we're going to throw away. We would have to do this with either technique. To solve this one as a proportion, we will do cross products. So we're going to have 8 times the x squared minus 1. Use parentheses so you get it times both. And the other way, 16 times the x minus 1. Uh, we have to simplify, so 8x squared minus 8. For here, distribute your 16, 16x minus 16. Uh, we have a quadratic, so we should get everything on one side and 0 on the other side. So we have 8x squared. Uh, let's subtract the 16x. And let's also add the 16, so we get a 0 on that side. So 16 minus 8 will give us a positive 8. And now we have a 0. If you notice here, you have a factor of 8 in each one. So we can factor that out, or we could divide on both sides by 8. Uh, we'll pull it out here and then just divide it out. So x squared minus 2x plus 1. And we can divide the 8 out. It's not going to matter. So it's gone. x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Uh, this one will factor. And set each piece equal to 0. It's going to give us the same answer. x minus 1 equals 0. When you solve, you're going to add 1, so you get x equals 1. So will also give us x equals 1. Look back at your exclusions. You threw one away. So that's the answer you're getting. You threw it away, so there is no solution. This is very important that you remember to do that last step. No solution is the answer to it. I'm going to rework this particular problem for you with the second method. Um, which is to multiply through by the common denominator. You still have to do your exclusions. Your common denominator here, you would have to factor this, and your difference is squares. It's x plus 1, x minus 1. So this is what you would multiply by on both sides. So x plus 1, x minus 1, times your 8 over x minus 1 equals, and x plus 1, x minus 1, times your 16 over x squared minus 1. You can write it by your problem. I just didn't really have room there. Your x squared minus 1 here is the x plus 1, x minus 1. When you clear up, all your denominators should cancel when you use this technique. That's the beauty of it. And so what we have left, we have 8 times x plus 1, which will give us 8x plus 8. And on this side, we have left 16. So we will subtract our 8 from both sides. So 8x equals 8. Divide by 8, we get x equals 1. But we threw 1 away. 
So there is no solution. I just wanted you to see the difference between the two methods. This one is my preferred method, uh, but either one would work for this particular problem. Our next problem, we have 1 over x minus x over 9 equals 0. Um, if we're going to solve this as a proportion, we have to actually change it. We have to only have one fraction on each side to solve as a proportion. So we can do that since that's what we're concentrating on in this video. So we will have to add the x over 9 to the other side. All right, you still have to worry about exclusions and uh, 0 itself is bad. So we're going to throw away 0. This cannot be 0. Do your cross products. On this diagonal you have x squared. The other diagonal 1 times 9 is 9. Uh, you have x squared equals some constant. Take your square root of both sides. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So x equals plus or minus 3. We threw away 0, so we're okay there. We have two solutions to this equation, uh, negative 3 and positive 3. For this particular problem, we'll solve it as a proportion. But if you multiplied through by the common denominator, since they're the same, the x minus 1 on both sides, they would cancel. So that would give you a very easy one. All right, so um, we'll go ahead and do it as a proportion, but if you notice one with the same denominator, the other technique is probably easier. All right, so if we do it as a proportion, what you're going to notice here is uh, you're going to get a foil on this. So you've got an x plus 3 times an x minus 1 on that side. Cross product on this side is 4 times x minus 1. Just some algebra, certainly you can do it. Here we have x squared minus 1x plus 3x minus 3. Clean that up. So x squared plus 2x minus 3 on the other side. 4x minus 4. A quadratic, so you need to get a 0 on one side. So we will subtract the 4x. So we'll have x squared minus 2x. We will add a 4. So we'll give us plus 1 equals 0. Uh, let's see if this will factor. So like signs both minus. And then we solve. So x minus 1 equals 0. This one will be the same. x equals 1. And what did I forget to do on this problem? I did not state my exclusions. I had variables in the denominator. Your x cannot equal 1. I get 1 for the answer. So there is no solution. Be careful not to do what I just did. Okay, always state your exclusions first. All right, so we have another problem that we could solve as a proportion because it has one fraction on each side. Again, when they have the same denominator, it might be easier to go the other way. Um, let's do our exclusions. We're going to do a proportion on this video. So we will first state our exclusion, and it's 0 itself that's bad. So x cannot be 0. If you do it as a proportion, you have to do cross products. So you're multiplying on this diagonal. You have x times x squared plus 6. That's one cross product. And the other one gives you 10x. So here we have x cubed plus 6x equals 10x. Right. Um, let's get a 0 on one side. So if we subtract that 10x... So we have x cubed minus 4x equals 0, right? Um, we can factor and use the zero product law to solve. So we will take an x out. 
and it leaves us x squared minus 4. And this is a difference of squares. So x plus 2, x minus 2 equals 0. Um, for our first one, to set this equal to 0, it will just be 0. x plus 2 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 2. And x minus 2 equal to 0 gives us x equals 2. Look back. U threw 0 away. So your answer is going to be negative 2 and positive 2. You cannot have the 0. It's not no solution. You do have an answer here. So negative 2 and positive 2. We have one more problem here uh, that we'll look at as a proportion. Uh, first of all, we'll do our exclusions, and in the first fraction, we'll throw away 5. This cannot be 5. In the second one, we would have to factor. Um, this is a difference of squares, so x plus 5 and x minus 5 equal to 0. So this would give us a negative 5 and a 5, so we have to throw away both of those. So those are our exclusions. And we'll do our cross products. So we have 2 times x squared minus 25, and we have 20 times x minus 5. This will give us 2x squared minus 50 equals 20x minus 100. Um, it is a quadratic equation, so we'll get everything on one side, a 0 on the other side. So we have 2x squared. Uh, let's subtract a 20x. And we'll add 100. And when we add it here, it will give us a positive 50 equals 0. Uh, we have a common factor of 2 there, so we'll take it out and then we'll divide it out. So x squared minus 10x plus 25. And when you divide by 2, it will be gone. So we have x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. Uh, factor here. And they're going to give us the same solution, x minus 5 equals 0 out of 5, so it will be x equals 5. Look back, and we threw the 5 away, so it's going to be no solution. I'm going to take just a minute on this one and show it to you with the other technique. Um, you can find the common denominator and multiply on both sides by it. So you have to factor this denominator, which you had to do anyway to get your exclusions. It's x plus 5 times x minus 5. So your common denominator is going to be x plus 5 times x minus 5. All right? It uses both of them. So if we write that on both sides, on top, and then this one, right here it will cancel the x minus 5. This one is going to cancel everything. So when we look at what's left, this one we have 2 times x plus 5. So we have 2x plus 10. This one, all we have left is 20. So we'll subtract the 10 from both sides. So we get 2x equals 10. Divide by 2, x equals 5. You still have to look back. We threw 5 away, so it is no solution. But you can kind of compare here. To me, this is less work. With a complicated denominator, I would tend to multiply on both sides by the LCD rather than doing a proportion.
but you can choose.